Obviously, and then he picked up Bayonetta. Um, he also played Palutena. And uh, Peach, he plays those same characters in this game, and he plays them about evenly, but he, he even though Zelda has more tools, he doesn't like that her neutral air doesn't connect into the same type of combos that uh, Zelda from Smash 4 used to. So he's got a bit of a conundrum there where his character is, is better, but he doesn't necessarily like the way she plays. So yeah. And that's a really common theme across Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, with, especially with characters like Ike, who, like, I, I hear so many Ike players say, like, I, I, I used to play this, like, great and honest character, and now now I, I, don't, I don't have fun with them. Yeah. But hey, I guess it just de it, it depends on what kind of mentality you want to adapt. If you have that winning mentality, you're like, you know what? I like this character and I want to win. I don't really care how boring he is. I'm, I'm just going to neutral air my way to victory. I'm going to neutral air my way all the way to grand finals. And I'm going to have no remorse for that. Yeah. One guaranteed thing about the Countess, he is going to be playing one of our wives, basically. But it looks like he's picking out Zelda this time around. Yep. And going against Cloud, uh, definitely was not a fun matchup in Smash 4 by any means necessary, but uh, we'll see how this goes around. You yeah. know, Zelda's a very different character, of course, in Smash Ultimate. You know, you got a lot of mix-ups, and a lot of it depends on how you play out with that Phantom. Do you put the Phantom in front of you? Do you put them behind you? Do you want them defense? Do you want them pressure? That's yeah. going to be a big deciding factor in this match. Yeah, and Cloud still pretty much plays the same way that uh, he would in Smash 4. Obviously, he has that huge sword, which serves as a, a giant disjoint. You're able to wall out your opponents very easily. The count is making quick work. Taking the first stock with that forward air. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Using the Phantom pressure out that directional air dodge back in the stage so that he can try to make it back with his limit, do exactly what he's going to be, get that fair, take out the stock really early too. And while Cloud does play similar, um, one key difference to his Smash 4 iteration is that he can no longer hold limit for as long as he used to, which was indefinitely until you use one of your limit break attacks. Um, in this game, you can only hold it for about 7 to 15, 15, 15 seconds. seconds. Yeah. yeah, 15 seconds and then your limit disappears. So uh, it promotes the players in this game to use their limit more aggressively. Yeah, definitely promoting the Mewtwo King playstyle. Great area right there. Zelda is a little bit predictable. If you want to get that sweet spot, you're kind of strict on your timing and looks like JD almost recognized that. Ooh. But the down tilt, put him off stage, directional air dodge, read it, get the potential combo, get the DI in, but he doesn't get the sweet spot, unfortunate. Yeah, the count is just punishing uh, J Dragon at every single move right now. Double jab into another forward air and J Dragon down to his last stock in this first game. Yeah, that was an interesting setup. Looked like he had too much hits on to be able to do anything there. And I like that using Nehru's love, keep himself uh, protected. There is a little bit of intangibility on that. Keep people off guard, but a back air finally going to take out a stock for J Dragon. Man, and I just love the like quote unquote planking tactics that the Countess was employing at the ledge right there. So, so many different movement options that weren't possible before, especially since uh, you would go into free fall after the Din's fire and not that is no longer the case in Smash Ultimate. Yeah, and great setup there, just getting the tech chase on the platform. You'll see that Countess isn't doing a whole lot of moving, just waiting for J-Dragon to come to him, knows that he's going to pick a bad option, he's going to space something incorrectly, just Ooh. like that, bear out of shield, out that's of taking shield, it out. Baby. And the Countess with a really strong game number one, let's see what the bans and the counter picks are gonna be from J Dragon. Uh, he didn't he didn't do too bad. I mean, uh, it's just I've never seen J Dragon before. I'm not gonna count him out, but likely that he's a newer player and the count is a little bit more seasoned. So I mean we're kinda seeing the story, um, the same one that we saw with Lord Muhammad yeah. and uh, Kid Kirby is that Kid Kirby was just throwing out so many buttons, throwing out so many aerials, putting him in a position that was really difficult for Lord Bahamut, uh, or making it really easy for Lord Bahamut, excuse me, to get those flame chokes, get those burst options. This point in time, J Dragon is just, okay, I'm swinging in with my ferret. This is a very solid neutral option for me and great to pressure you, but yeah. Count is just great at keeping his cool and then knowing when he's going to be able to find that opportune moment to strike. Yeah, and not only that, but um, in this game, there is another sort of counterplay to, against people who are continually pressing buttons on your shield is the fact that you can actually parry them. And we saw the counters do a little bit of that parrying action in game number one. I am willing to bet we're going to see even more of that now that uh, the Countess has gotten used to uh, J-Dragon's 
movements a bit. But J-Dragon is going to switch to the Young Link, so let's see how that makes a difference. Yeah, much different game plan. Usually Young Link, what they want to do is use those projectiles to pressure in and get a combo started. That Fire Arrow has enough hit stun and pushes them up high enough where it makes it difficult to really get out of these combo situations. Of course, you have things like that quick down tilt into fair, just a lot of great stuff for Young Link to be able to contest a lot of these different options that Zelda would want to use. Absolutely, and a fair from J Dragon right there. He's got solid control of this first stock right now, already putting on 127 on the Countess. Able to make it back to the stage safely. No punish on the high recovery. Well, I'm not going to be able to find a follow up after that. I thought maybe he would just go for straight boomerang into a fair, but it still works out. I mean, he's got 145% on the Countess. As long as he keeps his cool, doesn't try to go a little bit too ham against his opponent, he should be. Never mind. Woo hoo! The Countess going for it all and chasing J-Dragon off stage with that down air. And uh, the key difference here is that, oh, okay, there's the up smash equalizing. The stock's only 24% on J-Dragon. Yeah, so the, the thing is that the distance that Young Link wants to stand at while throwing projectiles, which is how he was able to get so much percent on him, on the Countess, is the perfect distance for uh, Zelda to do Far Roar's Wind and like get a punish off yeah. of him actually pulling out a projectile. It's going to be after me and matter. I mean, some of the projectiles have a little bit more startup than yeah. others. I think Fire Arrow is probably the quickest one. They're out of them. so fast. Heck yeah. yeah. So, probably going to have to wait out on that and see. But you can see Countess is kind of figuring out that J Dragon may be aware of like that. So, he's waiting for the opportune moment for J Dragon to let his guard down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, while that is true, he, uh, Zelda also does have Nehru's love to reflect those fire arrows if he needs to. You can see it's it's every time he's tossing out a boomerang that he's going for the up B horizontally and a catch with, with the up air reading that jump off of the right platform down to the final stock here between J-Dragon and the Countess, yeah, who has was, two. That was an odd stock for J-Dragon. Yeah. He kind of put himself in that awkward position. Those Callus platforms, while they're great to retreat to, they're also very scary if your character or your opponent has a very scary up air that can kill very easily, just like what we saw earlier with Zelda. All right, the Countess trying to make his way off the ledge using uh, Nehru's love to protect himself from these projectiles. He's still stuck here. All right, finally back onto the stage. Yeah, a spin attack won't usually uh, kill. It'll just send you upwards, so you can get a potential follow-up. Not going to be able to find anything, but Count is still relatively comfortable lead. Going to get that up tilt. JD looking like he's starting to get a little bit more antsy to try and find his kill. He knows his opponent's at a high percent, and he's thinking, okay, I got to find something. Otherwise, his lead is slowly fading away, but it looks like that's exactly what's happening here. Beautiful tech from the Countess, making sure uh, he can take a little bit longer on this second stock. Forward Smash 1, not going to connect, decides not to commit further, but a great coverage from that Phantom too. Puts him off stage one more time, uses up his jump, keeps the Phantom there for pressure. Doesn't find anything though. Okay, in the back air, meeting J-Dragon's down air, and 